Bobble baby. Bobble baby. Bobble baby. Bobble baby. Bobble. Bobble baby. Bobble baby. Bobble baby. Bobble. Bobble baby. What's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Today's video, we're talking about Bobble because my name is Bob. Bobble. Oh, brother. This guy stinks. We got to talk about it. Also, it's kind of been taking over Twitter, all the good stuff. Twitch, YouTube. It's kind of been everywhere. So now we got to talk about it. I have to give my input on it. Because I have very strong opinions about Bobble. I want to talk about it. And and before we actually get into it, excuse the hair. I uh, just got done from the gym. It's a little little messy, a little little messed up. And I uh, could have recorded this after. But Mario would have beat me and yelled at me if I didn't get it in right now. So I had to get it in right now for him. Let's jump right in to Bobble. Before we even look at the stats of it and what you're getting with it, how much it costs, all that good stuff. We have to touch on one major thing. What is that major thing, you might ask? Well, Bobble's not just a, a an item that only tanks or only squishies can buy. It really changes a lot of that gameplay for tanks and for squishies. We're going to talk, talk about both of them. Does it matter? Is it really overpowered for one of them, really weak for the other? Whatever it is, because when Bobble first dropped, tanks would abuse it. And they ruined the game with it. Is this new iteration healthier for tanks, healthier for squishies? Let's talk about it. Now let's go see the stats. So Bobble is a 40 power, 40 physical power, I guess, specify. 40 physical power, 60 magical power, 20 MP5, 10% cooldown item, which allows you to overcap your cooldowns by an extra 10%. The cap is usually 40%. It is now 50% with Bobble. You still have to get to 40% elsewhere, and then Bobble just gives you that last 50% to put you over the edge and to get, actually gives you that cooldown reduction increase. Now let's start, uh, start talking about tanks with this because that's when the game was ruined. You'd have Odin's, you'd have Hercules, just running around, always having abilities up, pulling relics, Tears, another one that would do it. It was very difficult to play against. How are tanks playing with it right now? Well, I don't think tanks are that big of a problem with it. Tanks have to opt into this damage item where beforehand it was a negative, it, it reduced your protections and it also reduced your healing. So it was really difficult for tanks to fit tanks to fit into builds. And now when they fit into builds, it feels like a lot of the times they're really not getting up to that that prot cap or their health is really low. Like, yeah, maybe they're doing a little bit more of that damage through more cooldowns, also just damage from this item. But I don't think that's an issue. If, if the enemy Odin is building this item instead of like a Pridwin or instead of a Mantle, Spirit Sorb, something like that, yeah, he'll have a little bit more cooldowns. He'll do a little bit more damage, but he'll actually be killable. So, so far in my games, I've not had an issue with Warrior Soul Lanes Playing with this, kind of ruining games with it. However, the other side of the tanks, which I think when I originally saw this change, I was like, oh no, they're going to ruin the game. And I'd like to say I was a little right. I've not seen it a ton yet, but I've played with it a couple games and I've seen some tweets about it with one specific character and it makes sense. So what is it that I'm talking about for tanks? It is support tanks that just go 50% cooldown and they're very cooldown reliant characters. I think there's four that really come to mind for me. It's Hell, Nox, Yemoja, and then to a lesser extent, but I'm still going to mention her with these top threes, Afro. They have such an impactful four abilities that when they're up in fights, it's very, very difficult to dive into them and to try to kill through them. You can kind of kill them, but they have so much survivability in their kit, namely Hell, Afro, and Nox. Yemoja has a little bit less survivability than those three because they have, you know, immunities, healings, a lot of movement speed. Actually, I guess Hell and uh, Yemoja are kind of equally killable. Hell just has these, the cleanse, which makes it maybe a little bit harder than Yemoja. But nonetheless, very difficult to kill them. And when they have these abilities on very, very short cooldowns, they just constantly use, constantly get that true healing from, that's when it becomes a little bit pr problematic. And those are the tanks that we're going to touch on in this next couple minutes, because those are the tanks that I think, if they bring back a portion of the downside bobble, I think it'll be very balanced for tanks. And I think it is the cooldown, or the, the health, health the healing reduction that you got from sphinx's bobble because when you're looking at these characters and actually yesterday's video is a nox mid build where i was constantly having abilities up constantly spamming doing a lot of damage imagine that from the support side of things where i'm able to dash in more use abilities more aggressively alt more i'm not going to be doing as much damage obviously but i'm going to be doing more harassing and stuff like that kiss six second cooldown a lot of times you're able to kiss the enemy keep your teammates uh when your teammates kissed and then you can also just instead of kissing the enemy you can Change who you're kissing with on your t allies with no cooldown. But Kiss is very impactful for Aphrodite. Back off is now a 6 second cooldown. Lovebirds is now an 8 second cooldown. But also keep in mind, cooldowns go down every tick of Lovebirds. So every 0.5, 6 procs, you're getting 1.2 seconds off of this. So every time you use your Lovebirds and this procs on your Lovebirds, this becomes a 6.8 second cooldown. 
and this becomes a 4.8, 4.8 here also. So this is even beyond just cooldowns. She, she gets even more cooldowns from her threes, and so does her ally that she's with. And then, I mean, quickly can touch on her ult. 90 second goes down to 45 seconds, and it's a two second invulnerability and a CC immunity. Hell, another one. Four second cooldown heal. Four seconds. Six second crotch shred, slow, immunity, and, and these have separate cooldowns. Uh, immunity and... Yeah, I think that's all that. Like, I, I can't remember if it gives something else. It doesn't. So it's just the just the immunity. Repulse, six second cooldown. That does, I mean, good damage. Uh, this is probably the least impactful part of her entire kit when you build her full tank is the damage from the three. I mean, it's nice, but it's not really why you care. You get heals, you get movement speeds on a six second cooldown. And then on top of that, you're also getting protections and power. And this is protections to your teammates. And this is power to yourself, which uh, again, doesn't really matter too much. And then you also get MP5 to spam as much as possible. And then Hell gains increased MP5, and half of the benefits gained from Switch Stances are shared with the allied gods within 30 units. So she's giving these stats to her allies. And that's all without this being damage reduction to the enemy, or power reduction to the enemy, and increased damage to herself. Which again, that part doesn't really matter too much. And then, I don't know the entire math behind Yemoja, but I want to touch on her quickly, because we, we saw what Hell's cooldowns look like. Or sorry, Nox's cooldowns look like yesterday's video, Monday. If you haven't seen it, go check it out quick. You can kind of be like, holy cow. Lens, a lot of them. Yemoja is the most impacted by Bobble because she has a an increase that she gets from every... Player Boot did the numbers. I don't know it exactly, but he said it's like 33% more effective that last 10%. Basically, think about it. Every 10% cooldown you're getting, it's getting more and more impactful, and that 40 to 50% is 33% impactful. That That's how I interpreted it. I could be wrong from what Player Boot is saying, but that's how I interpreted it. So instead of this costing 2 Omi and out of her 10 Omi, still cost 2 Omi, but that refund she's getting back is even faster. So that means more bubbles, more mending waters, more riptides. And then when you get the rivers you buke up, your spam is going to be increased even more because you get that extra Omi regen just at a base level. And Yemoja has never been easy to play against with these cooldown builds because she just does so much. And that's why I think adding back this healing reduction, I, I, it doesn't fix the issue. But when three out of the four abuse cases are healers, I, I think that is a decent place to start. Are we worried about Sylvanas abusing Bobble and not getting as much healing? No. Terra? No. Ixchel? Not really. It doesn't really affect them that much. They'll probably still be building it either way. It doesn't really matter that they're going to be healing a little bit less. So that's why I propose this 20% healing reduced for Bobble in general. And then to the other side of it, cool down for these damage dealers. Assassins, mages, hunters, is it really an issue? Is it balanced? What do I think? I actually think it feels pretty balanced so far. And, and maybe watching Monday's video, seeing these cooldowns on Hell, or these cooldowns on Nox, the Kronos Pennant, Deso, and just getting like two, two, three second cooldowns. I mean, yeah, but that's kind of the point of Bobble. Your, your actual damage on that first character is a lot lower, but it'll be up more often. That's the trade-off you're kind of going for. It feels good currently because I, I think... Mages are almost to the point where they want to be at where, and, and actually I think some people think that they are beyond that spot. Maybe they're doing a little bit too much damage because to be fair, I've not messed around too much with non-bobble mids so far. I just wanted to try bobble a lot, but apparently the non-bobble build is also feeling really good in mid also, but that's good having these two options. There's characters that want to build full power and try and one-shot you versus characters that want to just have as many cooldowns as possible. I do think that there is still a slight trade-off where even the characters that want to one-shot are still dipping into a good amount of cooldown just because of how valuable the cooldown items are, namely Deso and Mirden. Those are kind of one-shot items, kind of, but they also provide cooldown. But like Janus doesn't really care about one-shotting. He wants those cooldowns to keep spamming as much as possible. Gods like Zhang doesn't really care about cooldown. He could have 0% cooldown and he's fine with that. He just wants to get in and one-shot or get in and sit and fight as much as he can and just be tanky. I think the tanky style for Zhang has fallen off a lot, but the get in there one-shot you build is still alive and well. And that's the same thing with Zeus. I think Zeus is another god that you want to just one-shot. You don't want to be spamming a bunch of abilities with Zeus. You want to get in, drop ult, and kill someone. And that's why I think mages are actually pretty balanced around Bobble right now. And the same thing could be said for assassins. Again, do they get a lot of cooldowns? Do some characters get more from these cooldowns? Like Daji, Fenrir, Hunbots, some Boombas characters that also build into Bobble. Is it a little impactful? Absolutely. Is it over the top? I don't think so. I think that they're... Switching up their style instead of being a one-shot character, they're being a, let's pull relics back up, wait 40, 45 seconds till my ult is back up, and then we'll punish them. And that is good. You want to be able to punish bees being down. And a lot of these characters really couldn't do it because the cooldown was just a little too low or 
the beads are up a little bit too quickly. And I think this puts them into a spot where they actually feel valuable with it. And the last spot we'll touch on is the hunters, which is what hunters are building it realistically. Uller, maybe. Does he care? Not really. Is it even his best build? I don't think so. I think the only character that's maybe a little worrisome on or maybe a little abusable is AMC because five second honey, th this is a pretty unimpactful ability, but five second honey is really the main thing. And then the alt on and 45 second cooldown. I, I, I'm there 50 second cooldown. I'm not worried about it with hunters. I think this is more about AMC being a problem than it is Bobble being a problem. But maybe you guys have had different experiences with Bobble hunters. Let me know down below if you guys have. Maybe Chiron's been abusing it or Scotty or something that it feels very good. But this is just my experiences with it. And basically to kind of bring it all together, put a tight bow on it, a nice little bow on it. I think Bobble's in a great spot right now. I think it's balanced. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting for the game. Is it a little strong for those four characters that we spoke about? In my opinion, yes. I think if they add back that 20% healing reduction, I think we're good. I'm good for it. Because I was terrified of what Bobble is going to be doing to the game. And I was wrong. I'll say it. I was wrong. Bobble is in a nice spot. I like it right now. Maybe in a month down the road, more builds come out that are just more annoying and, and harder to play against and some characters are more abusable with them. But for now, Irez, good job with Bobble. I like it as is. Slight nerf to it, and then we're good. And that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you again. Peace.